Hello, Saints Nation, and welcome back here to some more Collegiate R6 action. My name is Jackson Fried Brown, joined alongside Mr. Danner's Banner. And we have a banger of a game here. St. Clair College versus West Virginia Wesleyan College here. Uh, it is going to be a Collegiate R6 playoffs round number one in this best of three series. Saints currently leading 1-0. And they came through with a 7-3 to three victory there. How do you feel about that one, Dan? I mean, I'm still trying to calm down a little bit over the Frost Trap finisher. Yeah. That was absolutely hilarious and absolutely amazing. But yeah, 7-3. Uh, to three. And the Saints were able to really get some decent work in while they were on the attacking side. So when it got to the defending side, I think they just gave up one. And that was basically cruising from there. But they put themselves in a solid position. Now, going into map number two, though, I mean, time and time again, I, I say Oregon worries me, but we'll have to see. WVWC has had their moments of glory, but there has been a lot of uh, missed opportunities and unlucky moments, to kind of say that at least, especially for poor fire truck. Yeah, and honestly, I think at this point in time with these two teams, like this game... <laughs> Uh, th between these two teams and all the roster changes that they've had happen over the past, you know, few months or so over the holidays, um, it's almost like this game is getting very, like, puggy, like, almost, like, right? Like, where it's, like, almost like a ranked MM almost type game. I feel like a little bit. There's definitely those moments where you see it come through. And I think that is definitely going to be a benefit here for St. Clair in the Oregon match pool. Um, coming through here in this one, I think um, um, from majority of times, rather than not, this is one of the better chances they do actually have at winning, um, you know, an Oregon map here. Absolutely, and like with with Kinger and Rapid, if things get scrappy, I mean they have the uh, the gun skill to like give themselves a slight advantage over some of the opposition on the side of West Virginia. But that being said, though, there have been a few standouts on the side of West Virginia as well, especially um, early. Why am I pulling a blank on the name of the Maverick Star? Uh, something Star, but uh, Simply with, Star. Simply Star was absolutely like clutching it out early kind of fell off a little bit late but then like other players on the side of West Virginia were kind of picking up where he left off but unfortunately like I was saying before just a lot of bad luck for to be honest in that first one so let's see if they can get themselves on the right side of the of the kill feed and bring this one pretty close because like we were saying before this isn't exactly the Saints favorite map yeah, it's going to be Thatcher and Mira out of here once again. Not sure if Valkyrie was banned on the last one as yeah. well. But yeah, so three to four of the bands are going to stay the same here in this one. As uh, we do head into the Oregon map pool here now. The pick phase is going to be coming underway. And this time around, it is going to be the Saints once again. Starting on the offense here tonight. And uh, let's see how they can do from on this side. Uh, I think I love Saints starting offense because it, it guarantees them a defensive side. And they can close out on defense. I think they're much better at closing out on that defensive side <laughs> yeah absolutely and as we go into the first attack or actually this first defense here up in the second floor this is looking like an interesting one as long as no six pick comes through the oryx has been locked in as of this moment yeah so an operator that we do not see very often being able Defenders to basically kool-aid man it through any soft attackers. wall and just catch attackers by surprise jumping up hatches very athletic operator, to say the least, here on the defensive side here for West Virginia. I'm very curious as to what Simply Star is thinking. Yes, indeed. So that is going to be the preparation phase getting wrapped up here now as all these teams are getting set up here on Oregon for the first time. Oregon Saints attack. It's been a while, Dan, and it has we're getting been. back into it here now. It's been a while since I've said those words, and it's going to be exciting stuff here. And I think that it, a lot of this is going to come down to these opening picks. If they can get, you know, inside, that is where your bread and butter is. Once you make your way from the outskirts into the inside building, that is where you can really start working your offense. Yeah, even with, with the old roster from what we saw in the last Oregon uh, time Saints played on it, they were, like, getting inside the building was the hard part. It just constantly kept getting shut down. It felt like they were just banging their head up against the wall, not able to get anything done. And there are some really interesting vantage points here on Oregon that can be absolutely abused. So we'll have to see uh, which team does it better. For sure, we see all three players climbing the walls. Yeah, Singer going to just a little bit of a slip through a window and try to find some sort of an entry, but he's actually already going to be inside the building. This is a good start if you are Kinger. Yes, he might not be that close to the bomb site right now, but just being inside the building is definitely a good sign to see already. Now, with that being said, it is going to still be a 5-on-5, five five, and the Saints are still going to be trying to gain themselves a little bit of map control. JM is the ones again, putting some holes into the walls, and that's kind of where we're at here right now. This wall in particular, oh, I've seen Saints struggle at so often. Now, let's hopefully see if they can get themselves through here. 
Okay, you do see Untold Warrior going for a little bit of peek on that hole that was just put into the wall there. Trying to potentially find some sort of an angle that is going to be the side of West Virginia shooting it through. And actually widening that one to, uh, you know, <laughs> the big doorway it is kind of now. But now the time is ticking. Down to a minute 40 and still everybody on the board. Kinger is still inside as well, I do believe. Yep, and we see kind of Salty Boy ready with the Candelas, but JMB's by a thread. Gonna hang on to this one. The elimination on to Classico. Still oh. shooting on down. Fire Truck is gonna be on the wrong side of Kinger, but big grenade coming through. It's gonna knock JMB right on his rear. But he has a teammate there to bring him back into the game. So wow. with a minute 20 left on the clock, Saints have five compared to three on WB. That's the benefit of Kinger and JMB stacking. Kinger's there for a trade and a res, and that is just perfect. You know, it works so cool. Can't ask for a better situation. Now a five on three. You do have JMB's tag down, Kinger tag down, and a bit of damage on the Rapid as well. But the player advantage being in the hands of SCC is definitely what you want right now. They still do have to get this diffuser down though. There's still some work to come through. Please go and fire the only players dropped. down for West Virginia. Now Kai and Drake, she's already used all three of her smokes. So unfortunately, as the time ticks down, she's not going to be able to stop a diffuser if Salty Boy can get in position to do this. Bit of a fight on the upstairs as well. Kinger is going to get taken down by Kyan Drake. So three on three. Simply Star did get knocked down in the process though. So they're going to have to either try and res them. They do, but instantly answered back. Rapid gets one, but Kyan Drake does return fire with the refrag. All up to the two newer players here. Now it's going to be Salty Boy and Untold Warrior, but that's going to be Salty Boy being the first one down. Untold nice. Warrior Nice trying to follow it up, but Stuhl will be there for the kill. That is now going to be the side of West Virginia finding the first here in this one, leading one to nothing. I mean, the call out was there, and Told Warrior was in the right spot, but unfortunately uh, for him, the player was ducking down or was prone at one point, making it really hard to see. So big props there for the side of West Virginia. Good positioning to clutch that one out, getting himself on the board first here. And Saints are going to have to go back to the drawing board this time by. I liked what they were, like their idea. They had Salty Boy on this Ying for a little bit of uh, the breach, the flashbangs and go kind of style. But unfortunately, they've just never got themselves into a position to do it until the very tail end. And at that point, everyone was already gone. Yes, at that point, everybody was gone for sure. Uh, so, yeah, Saints trying to turn things around here once again on the attack, and I can already bomb. see with that one, it's going to be a struggle to get inside, Dan. Like, it is going to be a problem. You know, Kinger was able to be that one player who did find his way through inside, but, you know, eh, you need to get a little bit more than that. It's, uh, Kinger will quickly fall there, and then it's a little bit of a sticky situation as Kinger is not able for a res or anything like that. No trade, because he was all up there alone, and it is going to be all West Virginia cleaning up the round now. Getting started with another one, though. Preparation phase going to come through. A bomb saying will be moving as well, and St. Clair going to have a clean slate. Now, this is interesting. One way that you can try to uh, make your breaches a little bit more safe is, of course, being able to bring somebody with a shield to lead the charge. So, Rapid, here on the Blitz, which is something I've not seen in competitive in a long time, and since uh, the flash has gotten nerfed from his shield, but yeah, his shield could basically flashbang people if it's up close and personal, so it's definitely interesting to say the least. And we do see a new operator here for Simply Star as well as Classico, as it's going to be the Legion as well as the Chaka getting picked up here for the side of WB. Lots of early shots coming through from JMB, so this breakdown is going, going to be the barbed wire there, but quickly destroyed here now. Salty Boy, Charles trying to find some intel, but Kinger will be the first one to open us up, finding Stool now 5 on 4. Just the player advantage that you're looking for, intel is gathered from Salty Boy as well, as players have been spotted out. Kinger now getting aggressive, looking for a swing. Hasn't found anyone quite yet, he runs into the first there, finds that one. Can he find the player reach to tuck corner in the right? Yes, he does! Kinger will find a second, that's a triple kill in the round. Can he find his fourth? It's all up to Kion Drake, and Kinger will find four for a flawless round for the Saints. Man, what a little breach we had there. Kinger's going to pop off with the four, but it was basically Kinger, JM Beast, and then Rapid. Rapid charging in with the shield, just causing havoc, and it let Kinger have an absolute field day on everybody. It was all down to Kion Drake, but unfortunately, that was a, uh, whatchamacallit, a five on, uh, five on one. That wasn't going to go in your favor. Yeah, so here we are, the final picks coming through. Now, will we see any six picks here? <laughs> and uh, it is going to be not looking to be the case early on. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I really am surprised that they're not using the six picks more often. But I mm -hmm. guess if you have a straightforward setup, you're using a straightforward setup. 
I mean, you don't need oh. to be sneaky if you're able to absolutely just win outright. They have the six pick, but they did not actually change anything. So it's not, not going to be... I believe that just cancels it out. So, like, nothing technically dagger. happens there. Because it, it, when you went into the six pick, it showed Wamai. So the opponents would see Wamai there. They don't so see that you six pick. They won't know that you even oh, try. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. If it was like, oh, we know you're six picking, but we don't know what you're six picking to, that would be a little bit of an interesting story, Rick, because you actually mm -hmm. don't end up changing to anything. Uh, but regardless, <laughs> it is uh, going to be us hopping into round number three here. Tie game as the Saints were able to do their job there on the attacking side of things and clean things up. Now we're back into a five on five for the prep. Ten seconds to go. Hunter Warrior going to be back here on this Nomad. Basically, is just going to be Five constantly watching backs, watching flanks, and trying to keep everybody safe with those air jabs. Of course, put put that on a hallway, put that in a stairwell or something. And if one of the enemies come walking by, just instantly activates, knocks the player on their rear, while also uh, making a gigantic noise, signaling like, hey, there's somebody over here. Take them out, please. So a little bit of extra pressure on Untold Warrior, making sure that his team doesn't get flanked. But uh, I feel like... The extra little support there, he'll be comfortable with it. Yeah, I agree with you on that one. The support will definitely be a benefit as we see a lot of the Saints climbing up the walls here to get on the second floor and once again try to attack top down. We'll see how it goes. It's going to be wrapped. Are you getting a little bit of an intelligence on one of these players' locations? Exactly what the Saints need if they do want to reach into this site. I think I believe this is the, the first diffuser. time that they are in the basement. Looks like it, and Saints are going to go right through the front door this time by, and it's not going to go well for Rabbit. Kai and Drake are going to find the opening elimination here in this one. JMP is going to be picking up the Finka this time by, but not going to be able to res, considering it was the headshot one-shot kill. So Saints player down. Granite Cayenne's a little bit uh, worse for wear, but still in the game. For sure, Salty Boy could spot an aggressive P coming through. Kion Drake and Fire Truck both going to be damaged down here now. And Salty Boy still just trying to hold that angle, trying to find something. But Kangar will take down Loisiko. As that is now going to be in a four on four. Salty Boy going to go for a swing. Could find an angle here now. And will do so. Salty Boy finds one. Until Warrior will fall. Salty Boy will get traded out. Now a two on three. JM Beast and Kinger. However, Kion Drake and Fire Truck are taken down. Kion Drake will go down. Kinger finding the first. Kinger, can he find some more? Is still this two on two? Has the bomb been down yet? Doesn't look to be so. There is a player rang down right to the side of Kinger. Oh, jeez. I don't know. This is going to be a tough attack. Yeah, this is really rough. And one thing that the Saints have to keep in mind, too, are the lesion traps that are scattered all around the site. But they might not have to worry about it if Jam Beast and the rest of the Saints can just clutch through it. Kinger looking for one. Who is this? This is Stool looking for the poke. He's going to get the jump. So it's a Kinger and Stool one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, Kinger and Stuhl one-on-one. -on -one. Kinger's got the health advantage. Both players, seven and one here right now. So both of them have been proven to make an impact in the scoreline of this game. Kinger will Jack wrap through and grab that ball. And the player is on the stairs just over there. Player did decide to swing. Kinger faded out the run away. He doesn't see anybody come. So I think Kinger's actually going to stick this plant. And it might not work out well for him. Stuhl could be coming in and coming in hot. Not going to spot Kinger initially. Pro zone fake. Kinger coming away from that one. No, Kinger did fake that one through. Yep, he would have had the stick, and Stuhl wasn't confident in pushing forward. So this is now going to put this in a little bit of an awkward spot where Kinger's really going to force it unless he just goes for broke. He's going to look towards the A site. If he does, there's a person right there. He has to try and make this happen. He gets a jump oh! and somehow going to be able to get the win. Wow, I, was that a one on three or one on two? It was a one VX. I know that for sure. One V two. Yeah. So Kinger will get the cleanup regardless, advancing to eight and one to open up this game here on Oregon. He's got to be a player to watch all Oregon long here. Now him and Rapid both. Those are the impact plays you need if you want to come through with a 2-0 victory in round one of CR6 playoffs. Oh, playing with my heart though. He did not leave himself very much room for error in regards to the time on the clock, but he makes mm -hmm. it worth or work nonetheless. And I mean, obviously, we have the bird's eye view, so we we can see like hindsight's 2020 and whatnot. That okay, just stick the diffuser and post plant, you're fine. But of course, you're you're in that situation. You don't know exactly what's going on, unless like you're able to see somebody on camera or whatnot. But we have some six picks coming on through. Not gonna actually happen here for Rapid. Do we see a switch off the smoke? No. So they're thinking about it, but not quite gonna go alongside it. Just gonna keep operators Defenders, standard as per usual. And interesting to see Salty Boy picking up the Ying a lot here so far on this Oregon attack with these uh, Candela flashbangs. It's really good for uh, 
breaching into a site and whatnot. But it does flash your teammates as well, so you do have to kind of be careful. Careful indeed. We do come through here now. Is it it's going to be on the second floor once again for the second time here now? St. Clair, it was a struggle last time around. That is where West Virginia did find their first round win. So let's see if the Saints can turn things around here at now for round four and see if they can gain themselves a two-round advantage. You know, we were talking earlier on in that number one there about how a two-round advantage in Rainbow Six definitely has a little bit more of an impact than some other titles. So we will see exactly what happens here and we'll see what the Saints can do. And see if they can the lead. Simply start looking for a possible run out if the situation does arise but it does not look like it is going to go into his paper at least this time by being able to like breach out the door nice and quick there with the orcs would have been absolutely hilarious but not going to take effect as we see the rest of the saints pushing on forward going to the top down as per usual jmd's leading the charge yeah rapid is not far behind he's actually going to be one of the first players to hop through one of these windows he has made his way in already and is shooting more and more trying to just distract any kind of his enemies there's a player right to his left playing down watching this window peek so i mean if rapid does actually decide to hop out of here it's not going to work out well for him he hasn't spotted anything quite yet now he will gets all that intel he needs onto this player the drone is still stocked up and sitting here and now untold warrior Will he be able to play off of that intel? I mean, fire truck being exposed there should, in theory, allow for Rapid to try and get this uh, electro claw here. But unfortunately, uh, we do see actually fire truck just defending the drone hole, making sure that doesn't happen. So if he can continue to hold that, this spot is completely unbreachable until fire truck is dealt with. And in the meantime, Kinger got picked off somewhere, but it is going to be answered back by Salty Boy. At least if High Andre goes down, now it's up to the rest of the Saints to try and clutch this one up, or is WD going to clutch this and bring this to attack yeah the drone usage has been well for the saints who have gotten that trade out there now and another oh. for jam beast player favoritism has swung into your favor and now we are going to be seeing more and more action come into light and here we are sorry about that everybody a little bit of a technical difficulty real quick but we will be hopping right back into this game in just a few seconds sorry about that one so stay with us as we do get ready to for this one to come right through not a whole lot we can do about it right now you can hear the sound cues going on so hopefully we'll see what happened here in just a moment we are very very sorry about this again and it does look like we are going to have a two on two Rapid and Untold Warrior. Rapid gonna go down. Untold Warrior now 1v1. Simply Star has been knocked down. Fire Truck and Untold Warrior. Can they do it? Untold Warrior will find the pick in a one on one. And your Saints will find yet another. That is the confidence booster that Robert needed here from the side of the Saints here. That is going to be so big, and you can definitely tell he was stressed out a little bit about that play. But definitely, you can tell how relieved after you find that pick. Oh, absolutely. I mean, he, like, his hands were on his head instantly, like, oh, he's freaking out. I know, like, we were, like we are saying before, like, talking to Untold Warrior prior to the cast itself that, like, he was, or the new players would be nervous or something, but I know uh, Robert specifically put so much pressure on himself that it's, like, not even funny. So even in a, if he gets himself into, like, a 2v2 or a one-on-one -on -one kind of scenario, like, anxiety is just absolutely spiking. It's such a tense scenario to put yourself into. And there's nothing better, no better feeling to clutch out a situation like that. Like you said, big momentum swing, and that could possibly carry up in the rest of this game. And it guarantees the Saints a minimum of a 3-3 scoreline after half on attacking on Oregon. Like, that is fine by me if you're yeah, a Saints. Not, right? like, if you're used to watching Saints R6, you can be like, look at the scoreline right now and be like, you know what? This ain't too bad. <laughs> We're looking pretty good. So uh, that's a nice thing to see. And that's the first pick in the game for Untold Warrior as well. And a big one at that around momentum changing game kill. Uh, so good stuff all around here. This is going to be both six picks coming through for either side here. Now we were talking a little bit about how they utilize fully, but now both of them coming out here in this one. So we'll see if that changes anything in the round. St. Clair though, leading 3-1 to the end of the round number five. Yeah, so a little bit of an interesting change for Rapid here. Going to be picking up the Capital pick. So whether it be um, fire arrows and basically using it like a Molotov or whether it be smoke arrows has a little bit of extra utility thanks to that crossbow. And Kinger for another round here is just getting absolutely answered. That simply start pushing him down. Yeah, those over-aggressive plays might be getting a little too difficult to, uh, you know, work on if you are from the side of Kinger here right now. West Virginia picking up on the intel and finding him once again. Now that's going to be an early five on four that... It's going to force JM Beast and Co.
and work around. They're definitely going to play this one a little bit slower now as West Virginia has put themselves in the driver's seat of this round as well. Celtic Boy Jesus just trying to get a little bit of this outside presence, trying to peek through all these little holes and every which angle and uh, trying to find some early pick to trade things out. Yeah, a little bit of top down, but of course you can go top down all you want. You still have to deal with this wall. Oh. Their answer this time is going to be Jam Beast here on the Maverick, but you got to watch out. I like that Rapids here for some cover fire. And if he only knew, maybe pop down the, one of the Molotov arrows, but it's not going to be the case. Never mind, he does find Fire Truck from the stairwell. Nicely done, and Jam Beast made himself a little murder hole here as well to maybe catch anybody else who is hanging around the doorway. Yeah, that hole initially was just for him to throw a nade down, but that hole actually was used for Rapid to find the kill on the player. So everything works out in the end. Fire Truck is down, Kinger is down. So we are seeing ourselves in a four on four situation. A little bit less map control than you would like to see if you are from the side of the Saints right now, but that could be quickly fixed. Uh, with a few entry frags, right? Untold Warrior here now coming through with the drone. And he is going to be scouting out anything he possibly can. He finds one there on the other side of the hole. And this is going to be the perfect opportunity. Salty Boy going to get tagged down. Salty Boy needs to stay alive here for this last second breach. If you're going to cause chaos with a last second Ying push, they need those Candelas to breach the site. Otherwise, they're absolutely toast. But losing the Diffuser here, as it's going to be Classico taking care of JMBs is not going to help the trouble. Now, Rapid looking like he's going to find one, but gets traded out there by Cayenne. Yeah, now it leaves all up to Rob and, or sorry, Untold Warrior and Salty Boy here now to try to make this play come through. It is a two on three, so very plausible here to work something out. This smoke isn't going to be the best of situations here to find an angle. Um, and ultimately, they if you're West Virginia, you know both players are stacked up on the other side of this window. You're just trying to make something work, so the smokes are going to come through to let him pop through. He will get picked off, unfortunately, for him. Uh, now leaving it all up to Untold Warrior. One on three, still on the outside. So he's going to try and find the clock shots to the smoke. Nothing going to connect. And now has himself in quite a sticky situation. Yeah, that was a tough spot to bring himself into. Simply start going to finish off the job there. But yeah, you're trying to make the play through the smoke and then like stealthily throw a Candela in there. But unfortunately, similarly to what we saw a couple rounds ago. Yeah, sure. You threw the Candela in, you charged through. And we did see as we switched over to uh, Untold Warrior's POV, he was also stuck in the flash animation. So he could not see anything either. So in that case there, Salty Boy jumped in was already well, relatively wounded and could not make the plague. Like, shot in the toe and you still go down. And then by the time Untold Warrior is, like, gone from being flashed, I mean, it's a one-on-three and everybody knows where you're coming from. So, a tough spot to be in. One more go-round here for the Saints attack. And that'll be halftime. Yeah, one more until halftime indeed. You know, they were in the exact same position going into round six just a second ago in the last Defenders map. So we will see them in the same position attackers. here. Last time they were in this position, they were able to close out the game 7-3. to three. So uh, if you can do that again, if you are from the side of St. Clair, that would be perfectly ideal. This bomb is going to be back onto the basement side here once again. As it is going to be St. Clair looking to make attackers. their final attack before heading over to that defensive side and looking to extend the lead to 4-2. to two. I mean, they're really having uh, some faith here with this team composition to try things up again. But we do see a switch up here on this side of, uh, of West Virginia. And it's going to be the Ella pick there for Kyandrake. Going to be looking for a couple of those fingers, uh, not mines, which basically... Like as a video call, it, it makes you drunk. Like it, it blurs your vision, it stuns you up, it makes it extremely hard to take any fight. You move extremely slow and just put out a couple key locations and that's gonna make this uh, this attack extremely difficult. Yeah, I cannot agree more. And so we do see the side of Untold Warrior. He's been very good at getting these early drone positions to gather lots of this early on intel. Mm. We see here once again coming through. So we'll see what they can do to find their, you know, some sort of an opening location to find an opening pick. A lot of these players obviously will be located in the basement as that is where the bomb is located as well. But you always got to be aware for that one or two lurking players because those are the players that are really going to make the impact here on St. Clair's attack. Yeah, sometimes we will see the Ella kind of fill that role in a, a competitive match where you just place your minds and then you're the one who's actually doing the lurking. But we'll have to see... Where Kyan ends up as this round goes forward. JMB is going to get everybody juiced up here with the Finca charge. Is anybody charging through, however? Don't quite see it as of this moment. Rapid holding strong until the Warrior looking for players to call out. They're probably trying to lead Kinger in, but as of right now, can't find anybody. 
Yeah, you can't really find anybody because they are all going to be stocked up there in the basement and ready to go for this push when coming through from the Saints. Jampies will find the first little intel once again with his drone there. That player back in the oh. back angle. Kanger will take down Kion Drake. And once again, back in the groove for him. He's had a couple rough rounds in the last few. So finding an entry Craig is definitely going to help him out. And that just goes to show the importance of drone intel, right? As soon as Kyan was spotted out, she absolutely got dunked on by Kanger ready to... Uh, just pre-fire whatever angle she was holding. So, tough spot to be in. As we do see the Saints looking for a little bit of a top-down, using some of those portable hard breach chargers to be able to bust through the steel, allowing a bunch more operators to actually do that kind of hard breach roll. But there's the LMI that I'm talking about. That's going to stop JMBs for at least a moment. Yeah, but that is going to be the charge up that does allow him to just quickly regen back to, you know, that full sobriety. Exactly. <laughs> and come yeah. back into this one. That's the only really word I can use to describe it here right now, as it is a five on four. Still in play, with that being said, though, quick a four on four. JMP's does get taken down, actually. Now it is going to be until Warrior trying to fight from the same angle, trying to find a couple of those early pop shots. Not going to work out early on, but Kanger is creeping up, and he actually could be a problem here momentarily, as he does have himself a few half decent angles. Salty Boy going to find Fire Truck now, a three on three. Okay. Kinger is going to try and get let in here. Untold Warrior going to get taken down. Kinger finds a return kill, however, but he's running through Legion Mines. He needs to pull this needle out as quick as possible. Granted, he's not the one who has the diffuser. Salty Boy going to have to make a move relatively soon. 20 seconds still on the clock. Gets jumped on. I believe that was Stool that took him down. So it's going to be up to Salty Boy to clutch this up. Yeah, it's going to be a smoke that oh, doesn't work out too nicely. Stool going to find the ADS jump there on the Salty Boy, and we'll be able to find that cleanup just as you saw on your screen there. An A for an effort, though, for Salty Boy and Kinger in that two on three, I think it was. Mm -hmm. So now heading into round number seven, the first round of our second half, it is going to be your Saints heading over to defense, and West Virginia Wesley going to be heading over to the offense. Tie game, and this is one of those more back and forth. This is a lot more of an even score line than the last one we just saw. And that's one of those situations that, like, you can tell when somebody's playing, been playing competitive for a long time. Heck, they still make these kind of mistakes, but when it's a, a very, like, intimate area where there's going to be a ton of, like, possible combat, you don't do two things. You don't reload and move through a door, and you don't sprint. And unfortunately, there for, uh, for Salty Boy, caught sprinting. The person's right there in front of them, but it takes too long to pull that gun out, and unfortunately could not win that fight, so... We're going to have ourselves a tie game. West Virginia absolutely putting up a fantastic fight here with Stool. Compared to the first game, absolutely coming in clutch here in the second one. Hitting the double digits, sitting there on 13 eliminations so far. But the next close is just being Simply Star at 5, which granted though Simply Star has had some rather critical eliminations. Yeah, and you know that is one thing you were just talking about there, the animation, how long it takes to actually pull that gun out from actually sprinting. It's yeah, one of the main flat. reasons that really hurts me from playing Siege, right? It's mm. like it's like you watch them and it looks like they're moving so fast and they're doing all this stuff, and then you hop in the game yourself and you're like you feel like you're just like wearing like big metal boots on as you're trying to walk around everywhere. Well you see these guys right here on screen just doing all the work as they are. It's absolutely crazy stuff. But three, three is the scoreline we're looking at. This is where West Virginia can gain themselves a lead you know it was St. Clair leading at 3-1 just a couple rounds ago and now West Virginia could find three unanswered and swing this into their favor it's looking a lot better for them yeah I'm gonna have to see how this attack ends up going here but I feel like the Saints are just oh. happy to go even this could be scary oh. though that is going to be rapid there the Arumi trap does come through to at least blur a little bit of vision and at least make it so that if he jumps through it he would take some damage and it's actually gonna force the player to run away so that could have been deadly but not this time all works out, luckily, there. If you are rapid, wow, that okay. is going to be Kion Drake finding JM Beast there. Now, once again, a first blood for West Virginia Wesley to put us into a 5-4. The St. Clair defense going to look a little weaker here now without JM Beast, as there's going to be five players pushing as well from West Virginia. This is not going to be an easy task for the Saints. I mean, at least, oh, hang on, a little bit of fire through the wall. Nobody could end up getting tags here, but that is going to get a grenade coming on through. A little bit of damage onto Rapid, but not enough to really be super significant. But at least with it being JMB Scoyo going down, those shields are already planted. So you're not losing any value in regards to your utility. But one person extremely valuable right now is Stool. Is he gets himself a double until the warrior going down. Going to bring this down to Salty Boy and Rapid to try and save the round. 
Yeah, and Rapid is in a really tough spot behind the bus. Let's hear Salty nice. Boy, though, in a good spot. If he was able to find the second, that would have been a lot bigger, but not able to. And it is going to be all up to Rapid, just trying to find this first one here on the other side of the bomb. And he will do that. That is going to be the knockdown. The cleanup is there as well. They're trying to run away with the pistol in hand. Can't get that turn and burn. Simply start back onto the board here, finding the round for West Virginia. Now extending their lead by one to four to three. And that's unfortunately one of the problems there with the Rooney. Your guns don't necessarily have that much ammo, which relies a little bit more on pistol play. And I mean, you can try to 1v3 with the pistol, but I mean, you need like pixel perfect headshots to make that actually happen. So tough try. It was a valiant effort nonetheless, but that is going to be Saints going down here in this round, which means that the lead is now back into the hands of West Virginia and putting themselves in a little bit of a better position, but can they make it too? Yeah, can they make it too? That's where things really start to get crazy. You, know, you can see a lot in Siege where it's back and forth, back and forth, but when you make it too is when things change a lot. But that's a six pick coming through for Vigil. And uh, you got any opinions on that one, Dan? Okay, so Kinger is either feeling himself or he's really trying to uh, like set the tone here for this defense. We've seen him set the tone in game number one with the very first time they were on defense. He did a run out. And now, this time by picking up the Vigil, this to me screams aggression. One of the like better operators at uh, doing flanking or being the roamer in defensive scenarios. But it really depends on how well you know this map. As we do see, my king are just staying by the doorway. He does have his invisibility cloak there so that he uh, will be invisible. Not to, to players, but to drones and cameras or anything like that. So they might not know that he's here. And if he tries to make a charge, this could be interesting. Yeah, I can't hear. I just don't want to. I just want to make sure that it really, you know, uh, the confidence doesn't get a little too high, and it does result in some sketchy plays coming through. But all is well by the looks of the first glance here, and nothing really too crazy early is going to come from this one quite yet. As we see the side of West Virginia trying to climb up here and break into the second floor, top down fire truck. Can be looking to get to that intel nice and early on. These drones so valuable. We say over and over again. Yeah, absolutely. Vision is half the battle here in C. You see Quasico here on the Habana. Another one of those operators that can just absolutely tear through this wall. But there is a little murder hole there with one of the Saints on the other side. If Quasico is not careful, could open himself up to an absolute ambush. That being said, does have a little bit of backup at least coming around. Backup coming through there. Both teams going to have their backup as it is still a five on five here. Fire truck. Maybe one of those players still trying to find one of those picks onto the Saints, but the Saints are doing a really good job right now of just playing very passive, waiting for West Virginia to come to them and just playing from their picks. It is going to be Salty Boy the first to drop here now though. The rest is available, not anymore. Fire truck there for the clean out. JMB on the trade. Hi on Drake going to trade out JMB. That's two for one in favor of West Virginia. Now a three on four. It is going to hold Warrior, Kinger, and Rapid. Kinger going to be the first one to advance here. Now he might run into a few of these players. There it is. There's one. Can he find the second? Just snuck away. Going to go for a re peak and there it is but king will lose his life do we see untold warrior here ready for a trade out and there's a player pushing on me finding oh. no stool did that line up Bomb rapid by attackers got the position at least turns and birds oh. not quite going to happen kai and drake gonna be finding a double for herself here in this one after faking the plant and finishing the job yeah, Rapid with a really close effort. He's had lots of those 1VXs where he gets so close um, to making that, you know, phenomenal clip, that phenomenal 1VX play. Just not enough there. And that is now going to allow West Virginia to gain themselves a two-round advantage here over the Saints as we do get ready for round number nine. That's where things get a little bit more shaky here from the side of St. Clair. It's no longer a one-round game. It's a little bit more of a work that has to go in this one. By the time you have to win four, your opponent only has to win two. And uh, just looking at it that way, it is scary. Yeah, because even if like West Virginia doesn't like take the match in like two games or whatever, they're still even if they get one more, this now like threatens. Okay, Saints, if you want to win this, you have to go overtime, and that's another stressor that can absolutely like throw you for a loop to say the least. And with a lot of these players, like I mentioned before, like, newcomers onto the squad, some of them like ranked was their only competitive. Like it wasn't necessarily like coming from a. A tournament background, so to speak, or a league background. Yeah, like, like so, they're 
queuing on face it right now, right? Where yeah. you, you see a lot of these players where they, they're making their face accounts for the first time here in the past few months or whatnot, right? So there's definitely a lot to dissect, right? Where, you know, even Salty Boy, uh, he's something I want to highlight right now. Because 575, you might look at that and be like, okay, he's a pretty decent player all around. You know, it might not be one of the stars right now coming through for the Saints, but he's definitely holding his own by far. And uh, he came from console, what was it? Like six weeks ago, eight weeks ago, probably. Um, and moved on to that PC R6 lifestyle. So, uh, for being, that being said, I think he's doing a phenomenal job here coming up tonight. Oh, absolutely. Controller is so much more different than mouse and keyboard. And then if you try to play with a controller versus other people with mouse and keyboard, then you're just putting yourself at a massive disadvantage. So, it's a tough learning curve nonetheless. But that being said, Salty Boy holding his own here for the Saints as we do have round number nine now underway, getting ready to breach on through. Nothing super um, different to come out in regards to operators. Oh. Just a matter of the Saints can execute or if it, uh, WV can execute here on uh, attack. Standard join in time. But a little bit of gunfire to start things off. Yeah, well, there was a really early engagement. Uh, it was Kion Drake actually did spot out one of the players from the Saints very early on, and it really caused for a lot of aggression over towards the garage side. It has fallen off a little bit now. The pressure has been not so sufficed, but. That being said, we're still on a 5 on 5 and there's still a lot of action ready to come as all 5 Saints players stacked up over towards this bomb site and ready to lock it down. I mean, the Saints are not even trying to get aggressive right now. They are all going to be on the site and holding each other's angles playing for trades. Absolutely, and this lineup here for the site of WV isn't exactly like a breach and rush kind of uh, style either. Like we kind of seen Salty Boy trying to do with the Yang or something later. So they are not going to want to let this go to the last couple of seconds and try to cause chaos, but that being said, they might do that inadvertently with how slowly Loading they've been up. going through the map, which to be fair, safe, smart play. But again, you're not leaving yourself much wiggle room as the smoke starts coming out, and that's Ooh. some serious value. Yeah, fire truck gonna get tagged oh. down drastically there, but a good little heal gonna come through to take those players' health back up to full. That's actually a problem too, because when you do inject yourself, you're basically, um, you're breathing faster, which means you take in more smoke and you actually do more damage than yourself too. So he absolutely oh. crushed some health bars there on the side of the BB. Oh, I did not realize that, but that being said, it is still in a 5 out of 5, so you're definitely far from counting WV out of this round. Uh, they don't have a whole lot of that map control, though. That's the biggest thing with this one being in basement, I believe, um, is that, you know, WV is going to need more map control. 45 seconds on the clock. You said they might oh. inadvertently, you know, wait till the last second. Kind of what we're seeing here right now. 4 and 5. UBC simply start finding another. No, Stool finds one. King are going to get a trade out, but Salty Boy Jesus falling shortly after. King are in Rapid. The two players that have been phenomenal all night long trying to make something happen here once again. Yep, down to the veterans, like you said, but Kinger is going to get taken down. So it's going to be up to Rabbit to try a 1v3 yet again here on Oregon. Not necessarily so lucky to start things off. And Fire Truck, okay, that's a good round to start showing up. Absolutely clutches this one out. And we can see the frustration after so many rounds just barely not quite going in their favor. And unfortunately, match point is now here for this side of WV, which granted, yes, okay, that means we go to Villa, which is a relatively neutral map here for Saints. But it means, also, if they want to win this one, they have a long way to go to try and bring it back. Five in a row, to be exact. Yeah. If you want to win this one here right now, you know, you can force an overtime and bounce a bit back and forth in the overtime. But if you want to clean it up, eight to six score line, you have to win those five in a row. And uh, looking at that from a, you know, an R6 standpoint, you know, five rounds is not a small amount by any means necessary. Um, so, uh, it all starts with one, though, and that's exactly what they're going to try to do here right now. We will see Kinger coming through with the six pick onto the Goyo. Uh, Jaeger, Cade, Wami, and Smoke to join him alongside. So, hey, anything can work. We'll see how the Saints can do here on this defensive round. Yeah, Attackers it just take to one to like, get them started for the winning but or on winning side of things, but it also just takes one moment to bring it into a match point. Well, not the match point, but the, uh, finalize this match point here for WV. And it's just so weird to see like the defensive side of things here for the Saints struggle. I mean, again, yes, sure, Oregon, but I was more so worried about the attacking side of things. When we went into this half three and three, I was like somewhat breathing a little bit of a sigh of relief there for the Saints, thinking like, okay, we got past the hard part. But apparently the defense is the hard part here for the Saints tonight as we now have 10 seconds left getting into this one in just the go. briefest of moments. WV, WC looking to clutch up game number two. Five seconds to insertion. Yeah, I'm a little surprised to say the least that uh, this is the scoreline we're looking at after Attackers seeing a 3-3 half. A bomb. So, I mean, good stuff for WV though. They've definitely oh, proven that 
they are meant to be here just as much as the Saints are now in this playoffs round number one here. And this is going to be the Saints finding map number one, seven to three. So if, you know, West Virginia wins this round, we're looking at like 10 rounds each for both teams and a very even score line going into that map number three and uh, trying to make it really anybody's series here at this point. This point to be West Virginia. We're going to want to get a little more aggressive. It's going to result in Rapid getting tagged down pretty drastically early on. Yep, that's going to hurt a ton here. Kyan kind of Drake nearly finding one. Just accidentally spray through the wall and would have maybe taken Rapid down or something like that. You never know here. Just crawling through the showers, just trying to get things set up and good to go. Again, taking it slow here. Fire truck again coming in clutch here. Going to finish off Rapid and put the Saints in a world of hurt to start this defense. Yeah, uh, losing Rapid is going to be one of the harder ones because he is one of those players that, you know, is one of those big playmakers and can make something happen if the Saints do actually need something to come through. So that's going to be more of a process for them going forwards. But uh, we'll see what they can do. We're going to need to see a little bit out of Kinger here. JMB, Selfie Boy, and Untold Warrior to try to turn this one around and do something for the Saints to, you know, advance them to a 6-4 scoreline. You just got to take it one at a time, I think, of the Saints. You can't think about this at the big picture right now. You have to think of it as a step-by-step -step process, and it all just starts with one. So we'll see what they can do here. Fire is tagged down. So is Low Seco. So you still have a lot of, uh, you know, flexibility to work with. You know, a lot of these players from WV, uh, WV who have been maybe a little bit slow to the gun, to say the least here so far in this series, are coming in clutch and right at the right time as well. Like Fire Truck, I was saying that it's having a hard time in regards to a lot of luck not going his way. That's some fantastic rounds coming in for him and some really clutch eliminations. Now going to make things extremely difficult here for the Saints. A minute on the clock. We might have ourselves a bit of a rush. And when you're rushing and you know you have the player advantage, that could be absolutely deadly. Never mind, evened up. Kinger going to bring it to four. Yeah, Kinger is going to even this one out. Two, eight, four on four. But oh. quickly like that, Simply Star is there on a flank. And that's going to hurt the Saints here now in this one. As Rapid has fallen as well as JMB's. Untold Warrior and Kinger are two of the players that are last alive here now in a two on four. Fire Truck is the only one that's fallen from the side of West Virginia. Kinger going to go down. Untold Warrior, this is your diamond to shine in a one on four trying to get aggressive oh. and trying to do what he can but glow seco will find that one west virginia will clean it up and that is now going to be put into a position we, we are at a one to one we are going to map number three in playoffs everything on the line yeah absolutely and now it's again another tough spot for untold warrior to kind of put himself into unfortunately the shotgun just a couple extra fellas is going to finish him off in that regard and as we can see like a uh, stool there a fantastic game number two here for him almost 20 17 eliminations on the board for him in that round fantastic one game number one was a little bit quiet started to pick it up near the end and it's like he's playing with the blindfolds off in the in game number two like yeah just, it was on another level and everybody else got elevated alongside him as well which is good to see there for wv and puts them in a fantastic spot momentum wise going into game number three Oregon was his playhouse essentially right there, and he used it. So yeah, Absolutely. map three for sure. I believe that's Villa we're heading on yeah. to for map number three. So stay tuned for that one, as we will be getting right into that one in just a few moments here. However, we got a lot to talk about here. The Saints probably going to have a quick little chat. You're getting ready to go into the map number three here uh, to get ready, because everything on the line, this is single elimination. Whoever loses this one will be sent packing, so both teams are going to want it and want it bad. That being said, we are going to have to take a quick little few-minute break here over the next couple of seconds here as we do get set up for map number three. Three, so stay with us. We'll be right back with some more Saints R6 action.